Dear brothers and sisters, for a moment, let us become aware of God's word accompanying us during our London journey. There is a plan and progression in the way God speaks to us during this holy season. On Wednesday, February 22nd, we began the holy season of Lent. On that day, we listened to Prophet Joel telling us to tear our hearts away from evil ways and practices to return to the Lord. We also listen to the evangelist Matthew telling us to take good care of our prayer, fasting and almsgiving. Continuing the Lenten journey, we came to the first Sunday of Lent and meditated on the temptations of our Lord as presented by St. Matthew. We were reminded that tempted though we may be, we are not to live by worldly possessions and power, but by making God's word the core of our Christian life. On the second Sunday of Lent, that is last Sunday, we meditated on the transfiguration of the Lord, once again as narrated by the evangelist Matthew. All of us shall certainly enter God's glory, provided we are willing to listen to the beloved Son and be transformed into his likeness. This is an ongoing process which demands our daily attention. Beginning with this Sunday of Lent, we shall hear from the evangelist John for the coming three Sundays, telling us about the faith encounters of three sets of people, of the Samaritan woman and the Samaritans this Sunday, of the man born blind and of the Pharisees the next Sunday, and of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary on the fifth Sunday of Lent. Thereafter, we will conclude the holy season of Lent, listening to the Passion of the Lord according to Matthew on Palm Sunday, and to the Passion account according to St. John on Good Friday. So, today we look at the story of the Samaritan woman. As you may know, the Jews and the Samaritans did not easily mingle or relate with each other. They kept themselves at a distance from each other. For the Jews, the Samaritans were unclean and therefore to be avoided. No Jewish rabbi or teacher would talk with a woman publicly, much less with a Samaritan woman. Jesus takes the initiative to meet a Samaritan woman. He asks her for a drink of water. Although she is shocked by the request of Jesus, a Jew who shouldn't take anything from a Samaritan woman, she strikes up a conversation with Jesus. As the conversation progresses, the woman becomes gradually aware of her own thirst, the spiritual thirst within her to encounter the Messiah. She knows that she is not good enough to receive the Messiah. But Jesus shows her that she too can receive the Messiah and renew herself, provided she is willing to drink of the water that he provides, the water of his teaching and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus thus offers her an unconditional welcome into a new way of life. She does not have to be a slave to her past. She can change over. She can choose to begin a new life. She can be a child of God and live a happy life. The woman is overjoyed with this invitation from Jesus that she immediately runs to her village and shouts out to her people, come and see a man. Who knows, he may be the Messiah we are waiting for. I know that he has changed me. Maybe he can change you too. Come and see. Dear brothers and sisters, on this Sunday of Lent, the Lord is inviting each one of us to look at ourselves. It does not really matter if we are good Christians or not so good. What matters is, are we ready to listen to the words of Jesus and to change our life accordingly? 
Or are we like the people of Israel in the desert, as presented in the first reading of today, complaining, grumbling, and putting the law to the test? Do we cover up our inability or unwillingness to transform ourselves by finding fault with everyone or with everything? The time is not right, the people are not ideal, the situation is not conducive. We can go on finding excuses not to surrender ourselves to the Lord. We could even blame God himself. Yet, in the heart of heart, we Christians do know that we have a God who is always ready to take us back. He is waiting to cleanse us and shower his love on us. No one is excluded from his open arms. Neither Jew nor Gentile, neither sinners nor saints. He has no boundaries and limits. All are welcome. As Paul says in the second reading of today, while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us and gave up his life for us. Dear brothers and sisters, let us not waste this precious moment of grace and renewal. The good Lord wants each and every one of us to recognize our worth. We are precious to him and he is personally approaching each of us today. He wants us to recognize our inner spiritual thirst. Am I willing to let go of the things that I hold on to? Am I willing to let Jesus more and more into my life? O Holy Spirit, who renews all things in Christ, change my heart too, that I may draw closer to you and be transformed into a vessel of your grace and blessings. Make my transformed new life in you a source of inspiration for many to come closer to you and find their dignity and happiness in you. Make me your beloved and enthusiastic missionary disciple. Amen. Thank you.